We're so big and it only takes one punch and we punch so hard and people can hear it. We're the giants of the division. If I believe any person in history can beat me, I'm not going to be the fighter I think I'm going to be. And I don't think there's a man on this table thinks any other man can beat him. And if he does, he isn't going to be or was a great champion. I believe that you've got to go out there and destroy people. You know, you've got to go out there not to win on points and pose and mess around. People aren't interested in that. They want to see a fight. I left school at 16. I had um, two choices, be a labourer, try and work on the doors or do something like that. So I just went into boxing, you know what I mean? I had 21 fights, just went for it, and I've done very, very well for myself. The heavyweights that come before me, that's who I used to watch, but well, that's who I still watch now. Before I go into sparring, before I go into my bouts, these are the guys that I watch. Maybe if I could use it on my way up, that's going to benefit me to beat whoever I've got to compete with. Now, I'm not just saying this because I'm at a table with heavyweight, but this has got to be the best one I've, I've wanted to be and get involved in. Uh, there's, there's, there's certain things that make the, the hair on the back of your neck stand up, and that is when you, they hear, you hear the gun uh, for the start of the 100 metres final and the first bell uh, for a world heavyweight title fight. You know, they're the things that gets everybody's attention. Even if you're not into sport, it just grabs you. Lennox, what is it about, especially the heavyweights, that makes it so intriguing, so interesting? grabs the public's attention. Because we're so big and, you know, it only takes one punch and we punch so hard and people can hear it. And, uh, you know, we're the giants of the division. We all, we all, we've all experienced some kind of pressure once we decided to put the gloves on, uh, uh, especially everybody, every, t every type of pressure. You, yeah. Anthony, you know, you, you win gold, all of a sudden all the pressure's on you. Everybody's watching you, every move, every decision, everything you think about. You know, Frank, you know, everybody's, you've got the country behind you, they love you to death. You know, is that pre was that pressure that you, you could handle, you, you liked, you said pressure that you just saw, you know, yeah, just I ignored it? it? because I put it at the back of my mind, you know what I mean? You put pressure on yourself in that way, you know, it's going to be extra pressure, isn't it? Double pressure, so uh, you just put that at the back of your mind and do what you've got to do and do what your mind and your subconscious tell you to do rather than worry about what other people and the pressure that other people are putting on you because that's a added... But Added pressure, what you don't really need. I can remember the first time I saw you, um, yeah. I was selling umbrellas for a pound in <laughs> Battersea, in Battersea uh, on the street corner. Was that a plus VAT? And you was in, you was, you was in a, a little old, little red Escort, yeah. and you pulled up at the traffic lights, All and right. I'm standing selling these umbrellas for a pound. I'm thinking, is that yeah. Bruno? I'm only 15 now, and you just you were doubled up in this car. <laughs> and put the thought, my put... music pumped up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Playing the tunes. Yeah, not to me, uh, to me, you, you, you don't realise you inspired a lot of guys, yeah. you know, at times when you least expected it. Cheers, thank you very much. W were you inspired by most of these guys or any of these guys that take yeah. life today? Most definitely, the heavyweights that come before me. That's who I used to watch, well, that's who I still watch now. You know, before I go into sparring, before I go into my bouts, these are the guys that I watch and I think, you know, that's good. Maybe if I could use it on my way up, that's going to benefit me to beat whoever I've got to compete with. Uh, Scott, what, what made you get into boxing? Um, uh, I mean, I come from a little town, Great Yarmouth, um, just up on the east, on the east coast. Uh, pretty rough town, you know, it's great in the summer and when the kind of winter comes, it's a, uh, kind of a town that's kind of a bit of crime and, you know, kind of dark corners, so you uh, kind of learn to look after yourself. Was you saying he was a bad lad? Um, I was, uh, I wasn't a, uh, I thought you was a church a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. So yeah, you had a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of energy, definitely. So, 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 so you, you, you decided to, to, to get into the boxing. Were you inspired by any of these, lot? Any of these two? Absolutely. I mean, these two guys here, you know, they, these are, uh, Frank, I've got my, I've still got my first, um, ever uh, scrapbook and Frank was the first guy I had in it and uh, still got it at home still th with all the photographs and everything and uh, and Lennox I mean both of them are, uh, to me they were the kings you know I was uh, I'm humbled to be in their company so um, absolutely always and and then obviously I went on and inspired Frank which was absolutely fantastic as well so we're all yeah. at different stages 
even now uh, in our lives. Anthony's just starting out. Tyson, <coughs> you're the one that's that's making all the noise, especially here domestically. Uh, saying some saying some things to try and try and grab the public's attention. Is that for show? Is that business? Or is that for real? You know, you've got to be a businessman as well as a fighter. And in this day and age, if you're not the two, you're on a short career. Just just tell me, because I've seen some stuff on Twitter that you said you'd, you'd beat this guy here. Listen, Lennox... Is that just to talk? Len Len Listen, I'll give me honest opinion. If I believe any person in history can beat me, I'm not going to be the fighter I think I'm going to be. And I don't think there's a man on this table thinks any other man can beat him. And if he does, he isn't going to be or was a great champion. I believe I can beat any man on the planet, past history and forward in the future. And that's my mentality of thinking. Do you believe, do you understand that, that, that way Absolutely, of I think that's the way he should think. I think, uh, you know, I think he needs to worry about the guys in his present uh, era first. He shouldn't really go after the guys that have really made it, that are, that are icons because, you know, in, in a sense, really, when, you, when you're talking like that, it's like, yo, you're really challenging an icon to a fight. And in, in, in one sense, if I wanted to come back into boxing, I wouldn't fight him. The reason I wouldn't fight him is because he doesn't have a belt. I would go after the guys with the belts. So he, you know, he's on his way up, he's young, still making a name for himself. And to have that kind of attitude is great. That's the first thing you need. Nobody can beat you. You have to think that way because that's the way I thought when I was mm. boxing. Nobody can beat me. I still think like that. The, the, the true Brit when you two when you two guys fought each other. We'll talk about you know stuff that's said before fights. And you know mm. time goes by. We say certain things to mm. to get attention to to wind people up. You know th there was a lot of bad needle going on between you two. You're doing it now, so I don't think you've got away with it. Um, but but there was a lot of bad needle going on between you two. Did it bother you the things that? That Lennox was saying, Frank? Not really, not really. It bothered me. Just chat, you know what I mean? At the end yeah. of the day, after the, you, you finish from boxing, still shake hands and get on with what you got to do, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you did take me to court. Yeah, but... I <laughs> wonder the issue. But you took me to court when I, um, when I was fighting um, Tyson for the second time. Yeah, because he was supposed to fight me. Yeah, but... That, no, that, no, that, but that was that, a, that was we're talking business. about the needle. The needle. Yeah, that was because you yeah. were supposed to fight me. This isn't. You took me to court, court because of something uh, you, I allegedly said. Yeah, allegedly said. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, yeah. Are you going to share it with us today, or yeah. what? Oh, well, I wouldn't like to go into that. You know what I mean? Because it's a, a bit. Um, I don't know if it's below the belt, but we all say things. We all do things. You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. was yesterday. You know yeah. what I mean? We're talking about today. Oh, so, so you forgive me. Um, yeah, I forgive you. I don't, okay. I, I don't hold no grudges. <laughs> I don't hold no grudges at all. You know, yeah, what I mean? nice. the way life is, life goes. You know, oh, yeah. people say things and whatever, and it's a small, small world we're living in. And yeah. tomorrow we may not be here. So while we're here, we might as well get on. Why worry about what happened yesterday? We have got to worry about what happens today, and what happens in the next hour or so. You know. Did, did it bother you, Lennox? You know, it was it, the tag was the true Brit. You know, people said, you're not British, you're from Canada. You bought yeah. the Canada Olympics. Did that bother well, you? No, because I, I, I thought to myself, I said, OK, well, when I win, what are they going to say? Mm. They're going to say I'm not a true Brit. You know, are they going to uh, not like me anymore? So for me, I didn't, it didn't worry what people said because I was really wanting to prove what I in the, in the ring that I was the best. And once I proved that I was the best in the ring, then they could say what they want. Yeah. But did you not understand you couldn't win either way because the country loved Frank? Oh, yeah. Frank, Frank is the darling to the country. It was great. I mean, you know, w when it came to popularity, you know, I would say he had more, he was more popular than me at the time. Mm. And, you know, I re it's that thing again uh, where you win, you take his popularity away. So when, when, when people are believing so much in Frank or even in Tyson, then all of a sudden they see me and Tyson fight or me and Frank fight, then they say, OK, that guy's not bad. He beat, beat who I thought would, would win at that time. So it's that Highlander thing. You know, you take a guy's head off mm. and you, you, you absorb all his power. Anthony, yours was a, a pretty rocky start. Mm, starting out, grew up in Hertfordshire. Um, past is past. Then I, Tell us about the past, man. <laughs> I know you're trying to swerve it. You know what it is? <laughs> I, I wanted to be successful by any means. By any means, I had the ambition in me. Didn't know where to put my ambition or my hunger. So whatever was out there with my mates or what we was up to, 
you know. I moved out when I was about 16, so I was living on my own for like two years. So imagine living on your own when you're that young, all your friends coming over, you're up to no good. Um, I got banned from my from Hertfordshire, my local area, uh, for a year. I for what? On, I, was on, uh, I was on tag for a year. <laughs> yeah, I was on tag for oh, all sorts, all sorts. And then I moved up to London with my parents. And at that time, I was in routine, because I had to be at home every, every night at 8 o'clock. Then I started training, because my cousin was training. So I, my main plan, I started going gym, lifting weights. So I said, when I go back to Hertfordshire, I want that respect of my friends, of my peers. So I want to go back a new man. Was that you bad? Was you bored? What, what was it? What, 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 what got you into trouble? What got me into trouble? That's what I was around. You had a lot of energy. A lot of energy. <laughs> I had a lot of energy. We're all in this. We had a lot of energy. I'm not saying that. I come from a good home. You know, my mum raised me really well. You know, um, but stepping out of that, of my mum's place into my own world, with with endless amount of time, no routine. That's when I probably went off the tracks. Then I found boxing. Oh um, my. And I never look back. This opportunity that boxing has given me is priceless. And uh, oh, I, the words can't describe. Well, uh, words can't describe how much I love this sport and what it's given me. And uh, I thank my cousin for taking me down the gym as well. My trainers for turning me into into a champion. So it changed everything about you Most as a person in the yeah. street, at home, at home, attitude, and um, what I can teach my cousins because they're they're walking the same path as I was. And it's funny because it's just like I look at myself in them. And I'm trying to tell them, look, I've been there, you know what I mean? And I've luckily had the chance to switch it up. So you, you try to follow the same course and do something constructive of yourself because anything is possible. Tyson, you seem, you seem probably closest to the edge. You know, some of the things you say, some of the things you, 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 you probably do uh, in a fight, before a fight. You know, were these influ was your early lifestyle influenced? You know, you by say this I'm kind probably of closest to the edge, but I'm probably most furthest from it on this table. I never was in trouble, never been in trouble in my life. Um, never had a trouble growing up or anything. I had everything I ever wanted. I had a really good uh, bringing up. And I box because I want to box, because it's in here that I want to be a champion. I want to make my family and people proud. Mm -hmm. I don't box because it's something that gets me out of trouble or whatever. It was my decision. I went to the gym, I wasn't forced or showed the gym. I had actually walked six miles when I was a kid to find the gym. And I was always like, I had cousins who boxed and that. And I never thought I'd be an amateur boxer. I just wanted to be a professional boxer. As soon as I was old enough, I was gonna turn professional. And then uh, this kid one day said, oh, there's a local gym down the road about three miles away. I said, no, there's not. I said, I've lived here for 14 years. There's no gyms. So anyway, I ended up going down the gym about 16 years old and never left it. At 16, but you, you, you've got a fight, you've got a fighting background. Everybody in your, your yeah. family's in, involved in fighting somehow. All my family's fighters. So when you say I'm a fighting man, yeah. that's what you mean? That's what I mean, exactly. It was um, nothing else. I was never going to do anything else apart from boxing. If I'd have had 10 PhDs in whatever, I'd have still been a fighting man today. I wouldn't have been nothing else. That's what I'm born to do. That's my destiny. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get any young man uh, to be, be able to relate to everybody <coughs> around this table. Uh, because we're probably not... Uh, you know, just you know what i got to tell you? When I took boxing up, I stopped fighting on the road because yeah. I realised that, yo, you know, being yeah. taught to train, to, to hit people, and if I can hurt somebody with gloves on, imagine what I can do just with my bare fist. So it kind of made me more um, calmer, especially when I went out to parties and stuff and, you know, you go into a club and the bouncer all of a sudden sees you and his chest goes up. Hmm. It's like... Dude, you, you get paid $50 an hour. I get paid millions. Mm. You know, does it make sense to me for fight, to, to fight you? People don't understand that it, boxers, you, you don't think like a civilian. I know it sounds a bit bad. Yeah. You don't think like a civilian. You could probably walk down the street and just think, not think twice about walking down the street by yourself because... More confidence. You're more confident. Yeah. It, Frank, you, you, it's, it's not a secret that when you were younger, you weren't, a, you, weren't a, you weren't a nun, <laughs> you weren't a priest. Well, I haven't got a criminal record, but I was attracted to bad sort of like people and people who got themselves into trouble, but I weren't, didn't have the balls. Um, I don't know if you can say that on the television. <laughs> but, you know what I mean, I didn't have the tools, you know what I mean, or the donkey to, what's the name, um, follow what they used to get involved with because my mum was a Christian and if I brought anything, yeah. I brought uh, the police once to my house uh -uh. and I got the beating of my life. <laughs> Um, for that, and I could never forget that. But um, I was attracted to sort of like the, the bad elements of uh, people getting involved in trouble and walking around 
stealing things and doing um, bad, bad, bad things, but I couldn't do it myself, you know what I mean? Because mm. my mum always installed in my head, if I did ever bring any sort of like trouble to the house, bring any police to the house, that would be in serious, serious, serious trouble. That so sounds so familiar. It just back, backed me off in a way, but I was one foot was in, in wanting to be a bad boy, but one foot was out of it, you know what I mean? So when but you came home with some of your friends, she said, I don't, you're not gonna... That, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She goes, do, right. don't bring them back again. <laughs> that's, what, that's a favourite word, you know what I mean? Because she could suss them out spiritually and see yes. that they weren't right, you know what I mean? They were kind of twitchy and <clears throat> a bit crooked. Tyson, you're going down this road. You, you, you're saying a lot of spiky things about fighters. To try and t entice them into a fight, uh, 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 David Hay, uh, David Price, uh, the Kalichkos, is there a method behind your madness? Or do you mean it at this moment in time? I mean it. I want to fight. I want to fight these people whenever, wherever, whoever. You know, and if they... Are, are you bothered if it makes you more or less popular? Are you bothered? Does I, it bother I couldn't give a hoot what people think about me, you know. Like we were just talking about there, the true Brit. They don't class me as British anyway. I'm, I'm just a big jippo from somewhere. So it doesn't really matter to me, you know, love me or hate me, I'm still going to win anyway. So if they're hating me, they're going to watch anyway, so I'm not too bothered. It's not a popularity contest, mm. boxing. And it's the best man's going to win on the night. But like you say, I say a lot of things, and you know, a lot of things when I challenge fighters to fight, I mean it. Of course, I mean it. I think I can wipe the floor of Vladimir Klitschko. I don't think he goes six rounds. And that's honest opinion from the bottom of my heart. I think he's tailor made for me. Do you, do you not want the love of the British public? To be honest with you, you can only earn the love of the British public. And like you say, being a traveller, it's not easy. Especially, it's not easy because you're never accepted. So it's one of them things, you're always an outcast. It's been that way for a thousand years and it'll carry on for another thousand years. I ain't gonna change that. People's opinions on travellers are very, um, very disrespectful. So only time will tell if it will change. And so this guy's talking about the, 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 the perception of the, the public, if you're mm. or not. You're on everybody's uh, on the tip of everybody's tongue in England because of what you achieved in the Olympics mm. and in boxing or in any sport uh, they always love a hero or a villain mm. are you going to be a hero or a villain I can't decide that um, you know the thing with uh, social media as well it lets people interact with with people a bit more personally so people get to know me for who I am what I say obviously you've got to watch what you say but as you said as you guys say as long as I'm competing and I'm winning that's so important to me that comes first and um, the people loving me or hating me, I can't decide that, but all I can do is be myself and do what I love to do and that's fight. You, could you handle any needle, Scott? You know, I believe that you've got to go out there, you win an Olympic gold medal, you've got to go out there as Lennox did and, and, and destroy people. You know, you've got to go out there to, to, not to not to win on points and pose and mess around. People aren't interested in that, they want to see a fight. They want to see this next guy who's coming up destroy people, take them out cleanly and turn around, you know, maybe n not show either. But, um, you know, as a boxing man, I want to see people get cleaned out. That, 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 was, that was your style, that was your attitude to get in there, toe to toe, have a tear up. Every time I'm going to get in that ring, it's a dangerous place. You know, I, you don't get paid for overtime in there. Get in and get out as quickly as possible. And, and obviously you, you have to, kind of take that mindset. So I grabbed his chain, I ripped it off him. I said, come for it, come for it. And he wouldn't come for it. Give you it his chain? Grabbed it right off of him, <laughs> like, rah! We we're talking about Needle. You got probably the most publicised amount of Needle from, from a, he's a scene Rackman when you guys started rolling about in, the, uh, in, a, in a TV studio. Did, did, did that get to you or was it that, it was it just the disrespect he had for you as a champion? You know, uh, it was a situation where, you know, my main nemesis, I wanted to box Tyson. And uh, until Tyson came out of his incarceration, or when he did come out, he, he, he wanted to box Evander Holyfield, so he didn't want to box me. And at that time, you know, I have to keep busy. So who do I fight? So I looked over the top 10 and I said, no, not him, he won't last, he won't last. I needed somebody that will last at least, you know, a couple rounds. Rockman was the man, so I gave him the opportunity. The fact that I gave him the opportunity, you know, 
he kind of came with disrespect. You know, this is, you know, he could have been waiting for years for an opportunity, but I gave him the opportunity. Then he came with some disrespect and started some funny talking. And, um, and there was one point he was wearing like some big chain and he had a holy bodyguard. So I grabbed his chain and ripped it off him. I said, come for it, come for it. And he wouldn't come for it. Then he went and told the police I took his chain. So I had to go, uh, I get, gave it back to my manager. I said, you know, I don't want it, but give you it back. You his chain? Grabbed it right off of him, like, <laughs> rah. So, because it was like a big medallion, I said, OK. 1,822 carat. <laughs> I don't even know. And then, um, you know, he just dealt with a lot of disrespect. Even when he won the fight, you know, we're in South Africa, you know, Mandela's over there. Um, you know, as soon as he wins the fights, he takes off. He didn't even go see Mandela. I still went on my safari. I, ca I came and visit Mandela. M Mandela, great man. What did he say to me? He said, oh, don't worry about that. You'll get him next time. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'll get him next time. So I chased him for two years, trying to get him back in the ring. Uh, the, the only thing that made me get him back in the ring because he signed a personal guarantee to fight me. You know, um, his manager didn't want to fight me. Nobody wanted to fight me. They wanted to go with the, with the belts. So anyway, got him back in the ring, still dealing with a little disrespect. He even came to my dressing room while I was taping up my hands. Once I seen that, I said, this guy doesn't have a clue. He doesn't, you know, he's a six minute champion. This is his two minutes of fame. Mm. And I knew his days were numbered. And I said, he's got my title on hold. He's just hanging on to them for me. Frank, you know, out of probably most of the fighters, I, I boxed around the same time as you. I admired you because you boxed for uh, a world title, you lost. Yeah. Uh, the losses you had, you, st you still had the drive to box on and box on and box on until you eventually got what got your dream fight, was. Yeah. What, what was your drive? What, what pushed you on? What I got you through world that? champion, you know I mean? That was my dream, you know what I mean? To be world champion, whether it's to be for five minutes, whether it's to be for five seconds, that was my dream, to be a champion, you know what I mean? And just wanted to, just, just had to hang in there and just um, go with it, you know? You believed it was still achievable? Def definitely achievable. It was hard, the rocky road here and there, but that's the way life is sometimes. Mm. Nothing smooth. Some days a good day, some days a sunny day, some days a, um, a cloudy day, you know? Wow. What, who has it helped you the most? Was it the people? Was it the, the, the general public's attitude? Was it was it the, the first the first loss? Was it down to was it uh, Bone Crusher Smith the first Bone loss? Bone Smith. I think you, myself. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, your inner mind has got to be your, your strength. You know, because when you're in there, you can't call upon no one mm -hmm. apart from yourself. You know, what I mean, so I think your inner strength. You, you know, what I mean, what you got your inner belief in what you're, you you want to do. You know, no, the crowd can help you in a certain sense, but they can't help you when you go over the ropes. Your trainer can help you, your mm. trainer can talk a good fight, uh, you know what I mean? Your conditioner can talk a good fight, your dietitian or whoever you want to do, but it's the inner self, your inner mind, you know? Scott, you, you, you know, you had the pressure of, you know, the country wanted you to be the, the first white hope of, of, of probably eventually being a world champion. A lot of pressure on your shoulders, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously all the champions then were, were, were black, there was Lennox, Frank was there, uh, it was Tyson, so I was kind of, um, and I don't think, you know, people didn't give me a lot of credit for for uh, for being in the game as well. So obviously I wanted to prove, I wanted to show that I was, I believed I was good enough to be able to, uh, to be there, you know? So I wanted to um, kind of go out there and, and show what I could do every time, so. I can remember boxing around the same time. You're just a little bit younger than me, only a little <coughs> bit. And you were, the, you were the, <laughs> the only pro I knew driving a bike in a Porsche. Uh, so um, I, I, to me, I thought, is this guy, is he as hungry as hungry as, as, as the rest of us? He looks like he don't need it. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a bit of hype going around. I mean, don't believe the hype, don't believe the papers. There was a bit of paper talk. Um, I'd borrowed that, that Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> you did! <laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> um, no, I mean, uh, no, I mean, it was, I was a hungry guy. I, I had, you know, I come from nothing and I wanted to succeed and, and, um, and still now, you know, every day you, you're looking for the next thing still. I'm still hungry to succeed because <clears throat> probably because I didn't achieve what these guys achieved, so I'm still looking, I'm still hunting, you know? But you see, when I look at the, the careers of these guys, I mean, Lennox was a, was a world amateur 
champion and he was an international gold medalist in, in various competitions, including the Olympics. So he's like the number one in the, the top, he's a world champion in the amateurs, same as this guy, you know, they're world champions in the amateurs. So all of a sudden they're fighting the top guys there. So surely that's a big confidence boost of going into the pros to think, you guys ain't in my league. That's what I was going to ask though, do you feel from, from an amateur career, so when you box as an amateur, to when you turn professional, 10 fights in, do you feel an improvement? Because, you know, when you look back on your amateur fights, you think, yeah. oh, I was rusty, I was raw, I was this. Then you look at your professional fights and you're competing with these yeah. professional heavyweight champions of the world. So I look at it like this. Improve. I look at it like this. You're an amateur champion, mm. boom. All of a sudden, you have to empty your cup. Start again. So you empty this, mm. it starts again. Now you have to learn to be a professional. Yeah. Different thinking, different training, different boxing. Yeah. It's not about anymore. Yeah. It's about breaking people down. You, you've got to remember that the amateur game and the pro game is completely different. I had 13 yeah. amateur fights, I only won three, but still ended up being world champion. Yeah. You understand? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So what you've achieved yeah. in the amateurs Doesn't is, is mean. massive. A yeah, but in a, in, a big, in a big scheme, in a grand scheme of things as a pro... You've got to empty the cup again. Empty that cup. Yeah. You you were talking after be, before the show. You were talking about what fighters are willing to commit to, yeah. to make that difference. Yeah. You, you were talking about sacrifice. It's sac It's all about sacrifice. And you know when I when I won the Olympics, and you know it was my time to turn pro. I realized that you know boy I was like out there with my head up, and everybody's out there trying to knock it off because they're saying oh yeah Olympic champion I, you know I want a piece of him. So each one of my fights, I started out going to camp. So I, I took myself oh, okay. away. I took myself away because I didn't want to deal with people coming and say, hey, Olympic champ, you're going to be good. You're going to knock this guy out. This guy's easy. I didn't want to hear all that. I wanted to go, learn my profession, come back, and then you can see what I've learned. And, and what, I've, what I learned and what I believe is that I was going to win and that I wanted to win. Do you do that? Do you take yourself away? I do, as you know. Do you think it's important? I think it's very important because at the beginning of my career, I didn't, uh, didn't. I used to train at home, go go back home to the wife, at home all all the time until the fight, drive up to the fight on the day and then fight. But the last few fights, I've been with my uncle Peter now for about 18 months, and we've had camps every fight for 18 months, and it's really, really working. It's a good, uh, good scheme we've got going. It, show, it shows your body's changed. You, you, you look leaner now. You look like an athlete now. I've always been a big believer in bodies don't mean you can fight and I was I was never in shape ever I was never fit and when you you've got 10 or 12 rounds to do and you're not fit and you're knackered after four or three even it's all pill battle and I was going to the well every single time and digging deeper to try and sub keep going and, and win fights and it was only heart and determination that get get me through these fights so I thought if I'm this good and I'm still undefeated and I'm not training properly jogging half a mile down the road eating a load of junk Imagine how good I'm going to be if I train properly, eat properly and sleep right and do the things right. And uh, I've been giving myself that opportunity lately, the last 18 months, and I've excelled from being a mediocre level British fighter into a world-class heavyweight. I don't expect you to be easy with this, but tell me about the, the heavyweight landscape at the moment. You know, the Kalichkos, you know, what impact what will they have on... Know? What do you want to know? <laughs> other than, on you. the next five years of the heavyweight scene, who is out there? Who's going to be, gonna honest, to be, be honest, the big ne next big name? It's, it's wide open for somebody just to come along and sweep it all open because you've got the clinch goers, right? They've dominated for such a long time and whatever. But they're old guys now. One's 37 and one's 42. They've got to retire sooner or later. And if I get the opportunity to fight Vladimir or Vitaly, then I'd love to, uh, to fight, but I don't think that's going to uh, happen. Have they been good for the heavyweight scene? Yeah, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, they've been good because they're phenomenal athletes and they, they live right and do all that, and no, because they've bored the job to death for the last 10 years. Lennox, do you agree with that? Yeah, I have to agree. You know, but it's a different style of fighting. You know, they've, they've grown up on a different style of fighting. You know, I mean, if you look at the American style of fighting, you know, it's all about uh, getting in there, trying to knock the person out. And, you know, you, you, go, you basically go out on your shield. The British mentality, too, is you go out on your shield. Their mentality is like you score the points and you stay away from the guy and you win from afar. You know, it's not, it's not the type of boxing that um, people want to see, but, you know, the German people want to see it because they're paying the money to see it. I'm, I'm looking at it, HBO's looking at it, the Americans are looking at it and saying, that's boring. So we're not giving you no TV contract. Go over there, you're making the money, they're paying the money for that type of fighting. 
Um, are they good for f boxing? Um, yeah, of course, because there, you know, there's a lot of European uh, boxers, out, young kids out there that probably look up to them. But you're, you're talking about the art of boxing, hitting and not being hit, boxing long, keeping it long. Somebody who was good for the sport, somebody that made that look so easy and exciting, was Muhammad Ali. Yeah. You know what? What your thoughts on what your thoughts on him? You know that 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 style, that attitude, or or, or have attitudes changed now? Um, maybe in Europe they've changed, but not in America. You know, everybody loves to see that type of boxing. You know, boxer, puncher, mover, uh, somebody that can do do it all because it really breaks down to doing it all. If you can do it all, you're a seasoned professional. You have to be. Yeah, to be a great fighter, you have to box on the inside, on the outside be able to take a punch, be able to, you know, to have stamina, and also, you can't get cut. Hmm. You know Frank, what I mean? Frank, how, how good did you, how much did you rate Ali, Ali as a fighter? Um, he was a godfather, you know I mean? He's one of the creators that opened the path for boxing. He was the first one that made people want to watch boxing, you know what I mean? Because um, a lot of people think um, boxing is a barbaric sport. And it's, you know, all the gangsters and different people get involved with it. But Muhammad Ali was a godfather, you know I mean? Chatty opened the doors for a well, lot of Was it what arts. he did, was it what he said and did outside the ring that impressed you more? Was it the, was it the stuff he did inside the ring? I think he both in, in, in a way, you know I mean? He paved the way for a lot of boxers, opened a lot of doors for a lot of boxers, you know what I mean? But when he... A style was that he adapted to the Joe Frazier style, he dropped to the George Foreman style, you know I mean? He, he, could, he could box and he could fight. He was an all-way round fight. He had a lot of heart as well, much more heart than a lot of people give him credit for. What, Tyson, you're named after Ty Mike Tyson, but what did Ali mean to you? To be honest with you, growing up as a kid, I used to watch all the old-time fighters and all that. Muhammad Ali was obviously a great showman as well as a great fighter. That was one hell of a game-changer. Like uh, Frank said, he opened up a lot of doors for different people. And it's sort of, um, it's inspiring to look and see if he could do all that thing, if everything was against him in them days, then anybody can achieve anything in life. But going back onto the, the heavyweight scene, I know we've passed that bit, but going back onto it, I think today the heavyweights, the heavyweights who's going to beat a Klitschko or going to dominate for a while isn't your, your Mike Tyson style Bob and Weaver. It isn't somebody who's on the back foot all the time. It's somebody who's the full package, someone who, like Lennox said, can box, can move, can punch, can slip, can do everything. And until that day, there's not going to be a champion to beat them guys. And that's why, that's where I come into play. Frank, how do you see this fight going with David Hay and Tyson Fury? Um, <clears throat> I see... Um, Don't be nice to me, Frank, just because of me. Hit me with it, baby. <laughs> Hit me with it. Tyson, what advice would you give Anthony Joshua? I'd say just listen to yourself. Don't listen to anybody else, not one person, because God forbid anything went wrong, you can't blame other people and start pointing the finger. Always know that you're only to blame yourself because you made that decision. Frank, life after... After boxing now? Um, it's, it's, it's been pretty hard um, here and there, you know what I mean? Uh, I discovered that I've got um, bipolar and all different things like that, so it's been a bit tricky here and there. But after boxing, it's not been too bad. I'll find my feet and getting on with my life and um, just doing what I've got to do. Everything changes completely. Everything changed completely, did it? Your lifestyle, your, 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 your trainer, yeah. everything. It was like... You were in the army. You, you had a, a, yeah, to be a, a, untrained and look after yourself and right. adjust yourself. You know, what I mean, mm. different channels you had to listen to mm. and calm yourself down. Sometimes when you're a boxer, you're full of energy, full of beans, and when you're used to using all that energy and that energy, you got to rewind, detox yourself away from that. You know. But you're still looking in, in great condition. Uh, and, I try and monitor what I eat because sometimes when you finish from boxing, you can put on so much weight. You know, what I mean, it's easier to put on so much weight, but as you get older, it's harder to take the weight off, you know what I mean? Is that, is that what fill your days now? Is that, is that what you do in your days now? You know, when you, when you box, you train twice a day, you're, you're dressed up and everything. How do you, how do you fill your I days I try now? and just monitor myself all the time, because sometimes you, you are, what you, what you put through your mouth and whatever, your belt sizes get bigger, you put on two or three, three stone, and it's so easy to do it, you know what I mean? But it's harder to take it off, but I monitor, and I try and look after myself, because if I can't look after myself, who's going to look after? What are you eating? 
Sorry? What you eating? I'll eat a lot of salad, chicken, and this monitor. What I, I eat sometimes, I, 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 I just have salad one day, you know what I mean, and mix it around, you know what I mean? Sometimes the, the, the food, what you eat, can put on so much weight, you know what I mean? Oh, everybody. I Huh? I know, I know. <laughs> no, it used to happen to me. It's it easy, easier said than done, but as you get older, it's harder to take it off, you know. Yeah. But I just monitor myself yeah. and try and look after myself. Yeah. Naz knows that, doesn't he? I, well, I'm not dissing him, man. <laughs> I am. He's not, yeah, he's you, look, you, look, you look happy now, you look happy. Yeah, now. I'm very contented, you know what I mean? I'm very, very contented. Sometimes it's hard to find yeah. that contentment, but yeah, I'm keeping busy, ducking and diving and keeping myself out of trouble. Yeah, man, that's good to see. Lennox, we could. You, 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 re you retired and... How long did you miss it for? Um, don't, you don't tell me you walked away from this game and thought, that's it, I forgot all about it. I didn't forget all about it, you know. Um, it's a situation where um, I've been there, done that, I've uh, accomplished my goals. I said I wanted to get rid of all the misfits out of boxing, did it. You know, for me, there was, you know, I really, I touched the other error, which is the clits goes. What did I need to do? I didn't need to do anything more, so it was time for me to retire. You've been tempted. You've been tempted with a big check to come back to fight them, one of them again? Not only being tempted, you know, I was offered a job by HBO to come commentate all the time, so they got me in front of boxing all the time, hoping mm. that I would do uh, uh, the thing that George Foreman did and say, that's it, I'm going to jump in the ring. But it didn't happen. I wasn't motivated to, to mm. jump in the ring. Nobody called me names or anything like that, so I was, I was content. You know, um, got four kids, and uh, you know it was more. T it was it was more time to give them. You were one of my inspirations about when I retired, stay retired, because I thought if Lennox Lewis, Lewis can do it, this can be done. Whereas before, we'd see many fighters that once they retired, they'd come after back after a couple of years and and lose and blow it all. Yeah, uh, Joe I'm, Kazaki did it. Yeah, I, I, setting a new trend. Yeah, well, I said you know if you want the legacy, you know you know I'll take off my pajamas for fifty mil. <laughs> so that's the legacy. That's what it's going to cost you to get the legacy. So, you know, I'm happy just to keep the legacy and, you know, leave it to the young, young cats to go out there and accomplish their dreams. Hey, Fury. That's only massive. Well, you said it and I didn't. How do you see this fight going and why? To be honest with you, I see this fight going one way, and that's my way. And because he is an inactive fighter, a celebrity, boxer wannabe. He's had two fights in three years. He hasn't been living the life of a boxer. And uh, I have. I've been training like a Trojan for the last 18 months. I've been active. I've been fighting good fighters, one after the other. And ring inactivity is one of the biggest failures in a boxer's career. Anybody will tell you that. And that's why I think I'm going to win. Inactivity, I have youth on my side, heart and determination, and I have a whole new style that nobody's ever seen. People have seen Tyson Fury in the past. They've seen me ball forward, take shots, be an animal in the ring, which I can be. But there's a whole new side of me as well that I've never shown. People in the gym have seen it, but people in the public and boxing have never seen. And I'm gonna show you something totally different. Frank, how do you see this fight going with David Hay and Tyson um, Fury? <clears throat> I see... Um, Don't be nice to me, Frank, just because of me. Hit me with it, baby. It? <laughs> Hit me with it. I see... Um, <laughs> Yeah. David Hay fight the Klitschko's and the Klitschko's could have been there all night for 22 rounds, 32 rounds, the same beating him because I didn't know what happened to David Hay that night. Um, Tyson Fury's got the style, you know, as you said, he can change from orthodox. He's a natural heavyweight. David Hay's a pumped up um, um, cruiserweight. cruiserweight, but Tyson Fury's hit on a different notes there that he's been out of um, action. He's a celebrity boxer. He hasn't been living the lifestyle, but I wouldn't underestimate David Hay. He's a very, very good fighter, but I think a good fighter as a cruiserweight, but coming from cruiserweight and moving up into heavyweight and fighting a natural heavyweight of the size of Tyson Fury, I think he'll have to be very, very wary. But I think that Dave, to beat a David Hay all the time is just a jab straight in front of him. He couldn't handle it against the Klitschko's. So if Tyson Fury is going to fight him, if he fought him um, Southpaw, if he fought him Orthodox, I think all he's got to do is keep it simple. But I don't think Tyson would think, because sometimes he gets very, very hyper. And sometimes he talks hyper and he fights hyper. But if he wanted to make an easy night for himself, all he's got to do all night and make him sort of drink a cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> you know all what? night this and man's beat done. David Hay. But I'm not dissing David Hay because I like David Hay because, you know I mean, he brings a lot of excitement to the table.
I'm not dissing Tyson Fury, but I'm saying that Tyson Fury's got the star because he's tall, he's long, he can set south for orthodox and he could just make it simple for himself all night. This guy's done his homework, you should be a trainer. Good analysis. Very no, good I don't analysis. think he's very good, very good. I don't think he's a good trainer, but I see it against the Klitschko when he was pumping himself up what he's gonna do to the Klitschko mm. and when he went in with the Klitschko, the Klitschko could have been you know what I mean? Drinking Doing tea. some side to side or using his donkey all night and still all day, all night, they're drinking a <laughs> cup of tea. You know what I mean? It's simple. That's it. It's simple. It's not, not complicated. You know what yeah, I mean? Sometimes yeah. in boxing, people make it complicated. But if you watch the fight, which I did, and I, I said, the man, the man, the, all Emmanuel Street was to tell him to do, just use a jab. And he couldn't get around the circle. From, but I'm not dissing him. It was just as simple and it was plain to see. Scott, how do you see the fight? Going? I, but, you know, again, a six foot nine guy is very, very hard to beat. I know I've been in with him. And, um, I, you know, this kid has got quite a few different things in his game, which I like. But, um, you know, he's still learning himself, isn't he? So he's not. You know, he's still trying it out as he goes. Hay, we know what Hay's got. He's got a hell of a punch. Mm. He can clean you out with either hand. Um, I think that's know. in cruiserweight. But, he, well, he could I do mean, that. He's, yeah, well, he's yeah. doing it with the pros as yeah. well. So he's hurting them. And, and, and I, I, you know, I believe that if he gets hit, he'll probably end up on his back. Maybe he won't get up because he's an explosive puncher. So he might not get up. But if he plays the game, he's going to stay away from him. Mm. He's an intelligent kid. He knows what he's doing. He ain't going to go near him if he don't need to. And, you know, what he did with Cunningham was, was, was a good job, you know. And he roughed him up, took his strength, and then got rid Is of him Hayes in the seventh tough as round. Is Hayes tough as Cunningham? No, that's it. I mean, because Hayes can I mean, fight I, David A's curtains for a week. I agree with Tyson in the fact that he's inactive. You know, we were we were, we're talking training about we're talking child, about the favourite so. here, David Hay. Yeah. David Hay's a favourite. So. Yeah. Who would you have? How would you work that, well, against Tyson Fury? Yeah. How do you work that one out? Look at the bookie shops. <laughs> bookie bookie well, shops. Why am I the underdog? Twenty-five to favor, one. That's a bookie well, that, favourite. That's with the heart, not with the brains. Mm. They Seriously, want me to he, lose. David Hay's the favourite. Yeah. Yeah, because he's Anthony, a two-time weight Anthony, world champion. Anthony, how do you see this? Because he's a two-time weight world champion. He's experienced. Is 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 important in activity but I think as soon as you get your mind set for a fight regardless if you've been in activity you need about a round or two to brush that dust mm -hmm. off you know um, he said his advantage is long bam 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 keep it there move southport orthodox is good Hayes gonna come out I don't think he's gonna come out as a Tyson ducking and he probably come up behind his jab as well and moving slipping shots as you see he's an explosive puncher David Hay. I've heard that from trainers and I've seen him knock guys out. I, I don't think anyone will get knocked out or go to a point. Yeah. I think did you go see to the point. Klitschko fight against yeah, David Hay? Yeah, but Day. He, that's, you... that's the world champion with the best trainer in the world. Yeah. In that corner, and you've got the, com the contender and, right. and up and coming champion. So I don't I can see a way that he was going to beat. So you Klitschko. see the Tyson Fury fight. Um, it being a bit more tighter, it, what, more explosive. Yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah most mm. of yeah. So, so where do you put your dough, Tyson Fury or, or David Hay? Uh, I'll put it on Hay. Go, Mark. I'll put it on Hay. Lennox? I think um, I think what you guys uh, are missing as well. You got you got to remember, speed. Speed is a killer. Mm. You cannot hit what you cannot catch. Mm. So if, if uh, Tyson Fury goes out there and he can't catch David Hay, it's going to be a difficult fight for Tyson Fury. I think that He's Tyson very Fury... Fast for a heavyweight Tyson Fury as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give him credit, man. No, uh, yeah, of course. But the, the smaller guy is always quicker. Yeah. And you have to be able to hit him. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, He's got the attributes to, 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 to win the fight, you know. The bigger man always wins the fight. A bigger yeah. man beats a, 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 a smaller man every day. But it's putting it all together. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an interesting matchup. And I mm -hmm. think, I think uh, it'll be a great fight to watch. And I think, I, think, it, I think David Hay will take more chances with Tyson Fury than he mm -hmm. took with Klitschko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your dough? Where's my dough? I would, have to, I, would have to go with, I would have to go with Hay because of the fact that he has more experience right now. And uh, it, it would be a, it would be a, a, a surprise, not, 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 not a surprise, 
if Tyson Fury wins because you know he he would be the best man on the night. He would be able to put everything together, but yeah. it's not going to be an easy fight for him. You know what I mean? So um, as Frank said, the country needs it. Final piece of advice for for this young pup here. Uh, we'll start with you, Lennox. Uh, you know he's got plenty of time. He's still young. What what does he need? What does he need to get up to that next level to follow your path? What does he need, in, as far as you're concerned? He needs a good trainer. Good trainer. And good lawyer. <laughs> good, good law, I guess good lawyer, I guess good accountants, but, uh, you know, um, all those trainers, mm. I mean, uh, lawyers and accountants, still have to watch out for them too. But um, mm -hmm. he's doing the right move. He's, he's educating himself. He's going around talking to different people. I believe um, look at everything, read everything. Speak to these guys, speak to everyone, get the right people around you, the right trainer, and you're often running with a camp, you know, and you're going to be, you know, you're going to get the right fights for the right stage where you're at, and you're just going to go all the way through. And then, um, you know, the titles are there for you and everything. So I, I don't, I see it as a full blown conclusion, really. So. Frank? What advice would you I give? I think him? he's got, you know what I mean, he's got the gold medal, you know what I mean, he's got the good starter, he needs a good backer, good lawyer to start off with. I think the professional style suits him down to the ground, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think he'd be a good professional as he seems very thirsty, very level-headed, very, very smart guy, very, very pretty guy, you know what I mean? He's got a good sense of humour, you know what I mean? I know in professional, if you get the good people around it, they won't rush him, but I think his style suits professional much more than it suits the amateur, because I watched him in a couple of fights that he had with the Olympics, and he done very well for himself, but he seemed like he was warming up more as the fight was going on, you know what I mean, more than he was a sl slow s starter. So I think the, the professional is suiting much more better. So I think he should start now building himself up rather than as Lennox suit, you know, getting used to keep on people, keep on the amateur style, seasoning himself up to get some corn and to get some titles and to make it a good domestic fight with um, our man here, um, Tyson Fury. Finishing off with our man here, Tyson, what advice would you give Anthony Joshua? I'd say just listen to yourself. Don't listen to anybody else. Not one person, because God forbid anything went wrong. You can't blame other people and start pointing the finger. Always know that you're only to blame yourself because you made that decision. And whatever you do in life, never regret it. Never yeah. if, buts, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Give everything while you can, when you can, and leave nothing to behind. Mm. Now, boys, you know what? I could carry on chatting to you all, all night long. I probably will do, but I know people watching have got to Hang go. Hang on. <laughs> Who do you think's going to win? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> with, with Tyson Fury and David Hay? Yeah. I think David hits him, he stays hit. I think Tyson is, is, he's got the attitude, he's got the, the ignorance to, to put it on David, to, to make it go long. If it goes long, I'd favour you. But I just think emotions are going to get involved. I think you're wrong. I think... I expect you to say everybody's that. Everybody's wrong. Johnny, I can only say, we'll see. And that's the big thing why everyone's going to watch, isn't it? That's what makes everyone wants to see. That's what makes a good fight. Nobody's going anywhere. These lot have got to go. That's watching. <laughs> but it's been good, boys. Sky Sports. Feel it all.